Welcome everybody and thank you for joining me on our review of kinematic graphing. Um, I know that the uh, the key is already online but if you just want to um, get a refresher on how we go through this and what the um, the procedure is here it'll be right now and uh, and right off the bat I hope you'll uh, you'll forgive me I have a bit of a cold now so if I sound a little stuffy well I'll explain why. Okay well uh, in kinematic graphing we have um, our stack graphs now of course they're not stacked here they're they're side by side we have our position versus time and velocity versus time and acceleration versus time but they work the same way as if they were stacked vertically so we want to be able to graph um, those three graphs based on what we're given here for each problem problem one two three and so forth but we also want to write the equations that describe how x changes with respect to time, how velocity changes and acceleration changes with respect to time and so forth. So right off the bat, let's, um, I'm going to write down our equations that we're going to establish for um, position versus time and velocity versus time. So we said our x, our x of t or our um, x is a function of time is going to be um, our initial x or our initial position, I should say position from now on, plus initial velocity times time, plus one half times acceleration times time squared. And um, you'll recall that would be our equation number four that we derived a couple weeks ago. Um, and we have one also for velocity too that we're going to use. So our velocity as a function of time is um, initial velocity plus acceleration times time. I'm going to write them in each for um, x of t and v of t. But what about a of t? That is our acceleration as, a, as opposed to time. How does that change? Well, the fact is that it doesn't. It's constant. Constant. And so whatever we're told about, about our acceleration, that will be a constant value for the whole graph. And not only that, but the graphs for v of t and x of t will get a little bit simpler. By the way, I should mention that this um, this one here is our equation number one that we derived as well. That's equation number four. Uh, these will get simpler uh, because some of these values are zero and some of these expressions will drop out. So let's just get started with number one. And um, I'm going to start with uh, acceleration actually because well that's easy that what's that graph look like well acceleration is constant constant what's the value of it oh it's zero great so that means on our graph regardless of time our acceleration is always going to be zero okay our velocity is a function of time so we have this equation right here, v of t equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Well, our initial velocity is greater than zero, so we'll say this is, that's positive right there, it's some positive number, and you can pick whatever number you want, um, but it's greater than zero. Um, and we have vi plus acceleration times time. Well, since acceleration is zero, then that means that goes away. So really, it means that our velocity, or our final velocity as a function of time, or whatever the time may be, is simply equal to the initial velocity. You can say plus zero in there if you want, because that's, that's the at, but the at goes away. So that means whatever the initial velocity is, the final velocity, regardless of what the time will be, will be exactly the same. So what is our initial velocity? Well, we don't know. We, all we know is that it's greater than zero. So I'm going to pick, I don't know, two, three, whatever. It's going to look like this. And so our initial velocity is here. And if our final velocity as a function of time is the same thing, then that will be the same all the way across. OK. Let's do now our x of t. That is our, our position as a function of time. Well, up here, it tells us that um, it's equal to our initial position. So what's our initial x? Well, that's 0, so that goes away. And um, see, do we have an initial velocity? Yes, we do. So that will be in there. So vi times the time, whatever the 
the time has elapsed will be plus one half times acceleration times time squared. You know, I'm going to erase uh, ooh, that's really big. Uh oh, don't want to do that. Um, I'll just undo that for now. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. Plus one half times acceleration times time squared. I was just trying to clean that up there a little bit, but I'll just leave it as is. But the acceleration is zero, so that goes away too. So our express expression for displacement is simply velocity times time. So whatever the time is, that's times velocity, which is a constant value. And if you recall that our value right here, that value in there, that equals the slope on the previous graph. So whatever the, if that value is 2, then the slope would be 2. If it was 1, the slope would be 1, and so forth. So that's what it would look like. That's our number one uh, physics kinematic graphing.